Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful today update channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thorne and Bridget are devastated to hear their pater is dying, and Eric kicks off his party with a toast. Wednesday, December 6, 2023 moment on the bold and the beautiful ridge tells Thorne their father is dying. Bridget heartbreaks at the news, there is no cure for Eric's condition, and Eric toasts his family with a shaky hand. At Forrester, Ridge tells Thorne it's good to see him, you were missed around then. Thorne can see nothing important has changed and is looking forward to seeing everyone at the party. Ridge grunts, about that. Thorne asks what it was he wouldn't tell him over the phone. Thorne asks, is everything oak? Ridge, Ridge shakes his head, dad isn't well. Thorne realizes he's sick and asks how bad it is. Ridge says, there's no easy way to tell you this dad is dying. In the design office, Katie, Hope, and Brooke dress for Eric's party. Brooke reminds them they've to make this a joyful occasion for him. She notes that Bridget's on the way and she dreads telling her that her father is dying. She thinks Ridge is telling Thorne as they speak. In the Forrester guest house, Eric admires Donna in her dress. She pulls him to his bases and tells him he's always been the most handsome man in the room. He coughs and she asks if he's certain he has the strength to pull off this party tonight. Donna gets him into his suspenders and jacket and fixes his hair. You look like Harrison Ford. You're the most elegant and handsome man I've ever laid my eyes on. Eric declares that the party tonight will be awful. One last family gathering. Eric, Donna, B, and B in the event venue at Forrester, RG, and Luna respect each other's aesthetics as Zend and Thomas look on. Zend asks if everyone at the party knows the verity. Thomas is taken suddenly that Zend now knows. RG explains that his pater told him before. Thomas tells Zend, I am sorry. Zend apologizes for coming down on RG so hard. I didn't realize why you were working with Granddad. I suppose it's really cool that you've been helping him out. Carter joins the group and Zend and mutters that he allowed. They'd have further time with Granddad. Carter recaps that his condition is veritably grave. This is a farewell party. In the design office, Hope and Brooke stayed for Bridget, who arrives and happily greets them with leverages. She asks, what's this occasion, however? It's the launch of his new line, right? Brooke sags, I wish. Bridget asks, Mama, what's that look about? In the main office, Thorne wants to know why he's just chancing out now. Ridge says that indeed he's not supposed to know. These are their pater's wishes. Thorne can't believe he's supposed to just let his pater go and not say anything. Ridge pulls him into a clinch. Steffi walks in, realizes Thorne knows and strides across the room to embrace him. Thorne weeps. I am not ready to let dad go. Steffi Thorne B&B &B in the Forester living room. Donna warns Eric not to ask her for a martini. He takes in some oxygen and tells her it actually helps. Katie walks by and asks if he's all right. Eric, are you sure you want to go through with this? Eric shouts that the party does a go. She pleads with him to go to the sanitarium, but he's determined to have the party he's been featuring about, a party they'll no way forget. In the design office, Brooke comforts Bridget, who has been told that her father is dying off screen. She asks if Eric has sought alternate opinion, and her mama tells her that multitudinous oncologists have looked at his case. Bridget muses, there's no given cure. Hope is so sorry for what she's going through. Bridget can't believe that they've to go to this party, and she must pretend not to know. Brooke recaps that it's what Eric wants. Bridget heartbreaks and heartbreaks. Bridget, Brooke, B&B &B at the Forrester Mance. Donna and Katie assure Eric that everything is ready. He can't stay to see the room filled with the people he loves, Memories etched into my soul. He inhales some further oxygen as Donna and Katie exchange upset aesthetics. Eric in the event venue, Carter, Luna, Thomas, Zend, and RG are joined by Hope, Steffi, Brooke, Bridget, and Thorne. They commiserate about Eric until Ridge appears. He announces that they are all dressed up to go to a party they shouldn't be having. He predicts it'll take a risk on his pater, and on all of them. However, they should stay then, if anyone feels they can't hide their grief. Tonight isn't about sadness but celebrating a great man. This is the performance of a continuance. Thorne can't promise he won't break down when he sees his pater. Bridget hollers about the pretending not being healthy. 
Ridge and Brooke work to move her. They need to do this for him. We can do it. We've to. Joy and happiness for him. Can you do it? Bridget nods. Ridge tells them to put on their game faces. Let's go. As they all file out, Ridge and Brooke grasp. Ridge Thorne, Zend Carter, Steffi, Hope, Brooke, Bridget, RJ at the Forester Mance. Eric sucks back oxygen and also asks Katie to put the tank down. He reminds Donna that they must remain the only bones, who know along with RJ and Luna. Brooke and Ridge come in with the others. Bridget hugs her father, who tells her she's beautiful. Eric chuckles that Thorne got then just in the nick of time and they embrace as well. Eric chortles, my kitties, his kitties are the stylish thing he ever did. They can't know how important it means to him that they made the trouble to be there. Luna and RG hail Eric next, followed by Zend and Thomas, who clinch their granddad. Eric welcomes Carter and tells him he's family. No way forget that. Katie passes out champagne, and Donna declares that Eric wants to make the utmost of every single nanosecond they've together. Eric wants to toast all of them. Look at you, you look atrocious. He wants this evening to be full of happiness, music, and love. He promises a night full of love, horse law, and positive energy. To join in horse law. They all raise their spectacles and look down awkwardly as Eric's hand trembles mightily, nearly discovering his game sum. Bridget and Thorne learn the truth. Eric is ready to snub. The bold and the beautiful spoilers for Wednesday, December 6 indicate that Bridget Forrester and Thorne Forrester will return to Los Angeles. Eric Forrester is ready to snub. The bold and the beautiful Bridget Forrester returns home. The bold and the beautiful spoilers reveal that Bridget returns home for what she believes is the feat to celebrate Eric's designs. Still, Bridget snappily learns that they aren't celebrating Eric's designs, they're celebrating Eric's life. Eric has lived a long and prosperous life, but his life is about to end. Will Bridget want to tell him the verity and try to help? Thorne has just changed his plans because Ridge claimed that he'd be at Eric's party. Thorne had plans to go to Houston first. Still, Ridge told him that he couldn't stay. Thorne knows commodity isn't right, but Eric doesn't want to tell him over the phone. Thorne will learn the ruinous verity when he gets back to Los Angeles. B&B spoilers, Ridge Forrester is determined to pull this off. Ridge is determined to pull off this party for Eric because that's what he wants. Eric has told Donna Logan that he doesn't want the family to know about his illness and impending death. Donna hasn't told anyone the verity about Eric, but RG told his pater when he wanted to rub it in about his palm over Eric. Rich decided also to let Eric believe he won the fashion challenge. Unfortunately, Rich has told everyone who knows that Eric is dying that he prevaricated about the fashion challenge. B&B spoilers update Wednesday, December 6, Bridget and Thorne learn the truth. Eric is ready to snub, that's also supposed to be a secret that Eric doesn't know as well. Still, Donna overhears someone talking about Ridge's immolation for Eric. Will Eric learn the verity? The bold and the beautiful Eric Forrester is ready for his farewell party. Eric has saved up his energy and is ready to protest off this party. Eric wants his family and musketeers to gather and talk about old times and his life in the fashion world. Eric wants to memorize about the times they participated in the family home and all of the love and horse law. Eric clearly doesn't want to talk about his impending death. Everyone is bending over backward to pull this off and one slip of the lingo could blow everything. Will someone blow the secret about the fashion challenge? Will Eric learn that half of his family formerly knows he's dying? Will Eric's farewell party go off without a hitch? Be sure to catch up on everything passing with B&B &B right now.